Oh, that feeling when you record a nice 10 minute video. Load up your editing software, throw it on in there, ready to render out. And you realize that for some reason, your Streamlabs audio sources have reset themselves for absolutely no reason whatsoever. So, <laughs> we're redoing it, and hopefully I'll we'll, we'll try and get it flowing as, as well as it can do. I'm really annoyed. That I felt like that was a really, really just nice flowy video that I just recorded, but we cannot use it at all unless you just want some MX bikes ASMR without the ASMR, because there wasn't even any game audio. Never mind just not my voice recording, there was no game audio either. So, yeah. There's that. Um, welcome back to another video. <laughs> First of all, uh, we are playing some 2014 Toronto, which is obviously quite an old track, but a very, very new track in terms of MX bikes. So this is a recent release by Cody James. Now, Cody has most notoriously been known for his uh, bike skins and designs. This is his very, very first track that he's releasing for MX bikes. And it's been really, really cool to see the progress because he's been updating the media part of the MX Bikes Discord fairly regularly with process pictures, uh, pro process progress pictures, and it's been nice following it, and I know that Cody, well I mean anybody that makes skins to a, to a high level, they've got to be a bit of a perfectionist at heart, so I was really looking forward to seeing the final product of this, because I imagine that it's something that he's really taken his time on, and something that I think is quite interesting is I, I mean so, some people may disagree with me on this, I think that a Supercross track to make well, so to flow, to make sure the berms are really well angled, to make sure the jumps aren't too peaky, I think it's more difficult to make a Supercross track, a good Supercross track, than it is to make a good Nationals track. Now I was quite surprised when I saw that he was going to make a Supercross track for his first track. I think most people start with Nationals, usually a replica of some sort, they follow TFC's tutorials to kind of get height map data and all that good stuff. So really, really interesting to see Supercross track, but I have been, um, I've been yearning for, for some Supercross track, I've been gagging for it a little bit because if, like, I, I don't dislike Nationals by any means, but you, uh, you guys know that my uh, talents definitely lie within Supercross a bit more than they do in Nationals, as I completely bored myself. I, I'm, I, you could probably make a compilation at this point of the amount of times I crashed while either complimenting myself or saying something's going well, and etc. But uh, I much, much prefer Supercross. I'm not sure why. It was exactly the same pace when I used to play MX Simulator back in the day. Uh, my only two Supercross, cha well, my only two championships in MX Simulator came from Supercross as well in the 250 class. And I, I choked a 450 on as well. I lost to Hunter Root, which isn't a terrible person to lose to, if we're being to be honest. Um, but what I was saying before I realised that my recording wasn't working too well is I think Cody's done a very, very good job on this. Now, it's by no means a track that I'm going to play hours and hours and hours on because it's a very simple track. There's nothing, there's nothing really in terms of huge lines that I need to learn uh, unless it's just me being arse or the Suzuki being a, a tiny bit underpowered compared to the other 450s. But I feel like there's no huge like quads or things like that. People much better than me can probably bust out some crazy lines, but for the sake of this video, I'm just having a nice chill time, just riding around, and I think it's quite beginner friendly. So if you are newer to the game and you, you're wanting to get into your Supercross a bit more, and the aerial tracks, maybe they're a bit too challenging for you, by all means, give this a go, because it's not difficult by any means. You kind of double and triple your way around the track. I, I'm going to try, if I remember next lap, I'm going to see if I can triple into that section, because... I've been doubling in, and I feel like I'm both jumping things for the most part, so we'll, we'll give that a shot. Um, but, just kind of good things about the track, I think the berms have been built really, really well. Uh, the angle of them are good, where they're not too shallow, so you can't get the bike cranked over, and they're not too steep, so you're just hauling an absolute arse around there. You've got to take your time a little bit, uh, but you can still kind of roll on the throttle, give it a, carry a good amount of speed. The jump transitions I quite like as well. Again, they're not, uh, if, if I'm slightly cased on jump, it doesn't bounce my front wheel back up to the moon where it's a really steep transition and super cross triples which I imagine are very very difficult to make um, mostly in regards to making something that you can clear but not get launched into orbit and then also a jump that's not too shallow like a proper super cross triple should be and I completely forgot to triple in just as I said I was going to last time uh, but yeah he's done a very very good job, job all around on the track really does flow and I can tell that he's put time effort and quite a lot of testing into it so I thank you very much Cody for blessing us with some uh, super cross content and I look forward to seeing some more stuff from you whether it's going to be a nationals track next or another super cross track who knows but I'm open to it either way now 
I went on a little bit of a uh, off-topic run in the uh, failed recording, so I'm going to briefly go over it again. Now, uh, some of you may know, I mentioned maybe, I don't know how long ago it was now, maybe two weeks or so, that I wanted to make a conscious effort to improve myself in terms of just general fitness and uh, weight. So, obviously, two weeks ago, well, so this last week, I've been exercising almost every single day and I've resorted my diet out in terms of cutting out like the crap and the sugary drinks and things like that. Uh, the week prior to that, I was also doing the same, but not by choice. It was where I was uh, ill and I had COVID. I just didn't have an appetite at all. So I was literally just living off one meal a day and some water, which of course is going to decrease anybody's weight. So I am in the last two weeks, I am down eight pounds. Not sure what that is in kg, I'm sorry, you can do the conversion yourself. Which is quite a drastic change, I think, in terms of two weeks. I, s I swear they say you're only meant to drop like two pounds a week at, at most. Um, but it's, I mean, the it's probably a lot of it's water weight, to be honest, to begin with. But what I wanted to talk about is I, to, in order to exercise, uh, I've just been doing stuff at home. And I'm not going to the gym or anything, lifting weights. I've got a stationary bike in my room and I've got it hooked up to my PC and I use Zwift. Now, those of you who don't know what Zwift is, it is, uh, it's like, a, it's a virtual cycling world, essentially. So no different to us all loading up MX bikes and playing against each other. You know, we're all in our individual bedrooms uh, when we play MX bikes and it's exactly the same when it comes to Swift where everyone's in their own bedrooms, living rooms, garage, whatever it might be and they're all on their stationary bikes connected to each other and you can all see each other and kind of ride with each other and it's really good so in in the virtual world when you go up hills and stuff it adds resistance to your bike and things like that so it's not obviously it's not the, exactly the same as the real thing but it's, it's pretty damn close uh, where I live there's not really a whole lot in terms of like good cycling routes. It's not like America where you have like miles and miles and miles of just straight roads. Um, yeah, just not very, not very good around here. Not much in terms of uh, cycling opportunity. So that's why I do it uh, in my room on the stationary bike. And I quite like cycling just for the fact that it's quite, uh, or well, it's very low impact. It's nothing, no like hard impacts going through your legs and things like that. I do enjoy swimming as well, but all of the local swimming pools near me, you always get like snotty, horrible kids, and it's always really, really busy. So quite hard to put in some dedicated laps rather than just trying to tread around people. Uh, so that's why I cycle. Now, Zwift is something that I used pretty religiously uh, about a year and a half or so ago when I got into the best shape of my adult life. I was putting in a good maybe hour and a half or two hours per day. You know, I was doing two sessions a day. I was doing it during my lunch break where I worked from home and I was doing it after work as well and really, really enjoying it. So I'm in, obviously I'm in that early stage right now where you're developing a new habit again and you kind of don't really want to do it, but you force yourself and give it another kind of week or two and I'll be fully in the swing of things and enjoying it. But that whole little bit of background right there was to lead on to what I actually want to talk about is for some reason when I've been doing these uh, these rides on the bike my left arm slash hand has been going numb <laughs> now I obviously it's not something that I'm majorly concerned about um, I've googled it anybody knows if you google anything that's wrong with you the response that will come back is that you're on the brink of death and you should take immediate action but uh, no apparently well it, it doesn't last very long and if I shake my arm out enough it kind of comes back but it's nothing that I've experienced before um, I read somewhere that apparently it is the body pushing blood to other areas of your body whilst you're exercising which if I'm cycling it would make sense that maybe it's pushing to my legs as my legs have obviously been used a whole lot more than my arms um, but yeah no, not something that I've ever had an issue with before uh, even when I used to do it kind of a year and a half ago so very very odd and just something that I wanted to mention and I, d I don't mind bringing these things up to you guys because if ever I have any like questions or I'm unsure on something whether it's in regards to like general fitness or real life riding or even in game stuff uh, there's quite a lot of uh, knowledgeable people in my comment section and I really do appreciate everyone's input but maybe someone's experienced something else and there's a way of combating it maybe it's just something that you got to deal with and it'll go away by itself over time but I just thought I'd want to bring it out because it's really really strange um, I play a fair amount of trials uh, trials rising in my spare time I just quite quite enjoy it it's a very casual game quite easy to play when you're not getting like raged out your head because you keep crashing um but last night after my workout as i say my left hand went completely numb to a point where i couldn't actually move my thumb so i couldn't play the game anymore it was just on the stick and i had no control over it so whether it's something to be concerned about or not i don't know personally at this point right now i'm not too worried about it it's just 
didn't know if anybody else had any other opinions on what it might be or how to possibly go about changing it. And I, obviously I've changed the way I sit on the bike every now and then, I shake my arm out every now and then, um, but it still comes back from, uh, from time to time. So yeah, there's that very, very odd thing. Um, other news, which is quite good, I'm really, really excited for, is I mentioned a video or two ago that I was meant to be going riding on Monday at a private hire for my friend's birthday, uh, and it was cancelled. However, we found a different track that we're going to now, a track that I've never been to before, but it's about a two and a half hour drive, which is going to be a bit of a pain, getting up super early, but I'm sure it'll be worth it. Um, but what I did want to mention is, it's going to be one of them days that, for the most part, I feel like I just want to chill out and just have fun riding my bike with friends you know there's no pressure we've got the track to ourselves we can go on and off whenever we want which is something that you don't get to do very often in the uk i feel like that's something that is quite common in the us uh, there's not really i don't think as many tracks are grouped uh, as, as much as the uk are where you kind of you get put in your individual groups and you have kind of like 20 minute sessions to go out and then come back in uh, but yeah we get to go out on and off whenever we want and i just want to have a good fun day of riding my bike i might try out some other people's bikes um, i know one of my dad's friends that's going has a ktm 450 and a 350 that he's taking that i might possibly try um, we'll see how it goes so the only reason i'm saying that is i might not have a whole bunch of footage because i don't want to just treat the day as oh i need to get a video out of today i need to do some recording obviously i'm going to take the gopro i'll put it on if i remember to but i just don't want to promise anything so i just wanted to uh, to mention that but i'm super super excited for it it should be a good day and i always like going to new tracks and trying to test things out the track looks uh, i've looked at it on youtube i can't remember the name of it off the top of my head which i apologize for um, but it looks a little bit on the hard pack side of things which you guys or older viewers will know that i absolutely love uh, i'm a big big hard pack fan which probably makes me a little bit weird i think we're quite a quite a rare breed but it should be a good day regardless um i think that'll do it for this video i don't know if it flowed as, as well as the original recording but i feel like i covered all of the bases as uh, as well as i could have uh, i hope you've enjoyed the video most importantly if you did please 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 do drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new i hope you have a lovely rest of the day whatever you guys are up to and until catch you in the next video peace I'm working hard, I'm sacrificing my life, I'm sacrificing my mind, I'm sacrificing my sanity, but most importantly, I'm sacrificing my time. Boy, I feel fine, I feel like I am a king. Honestly, I can't complain. Even with faith that's the size of a grain of some salt, I will still move a mountain and do what I want. I